Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where we're going to be looking at some tips and techniques on how to draw a wolf eye study like this one. So I'm going to take you through a few quick techniques to do the eyes. We've covered eyes in depth on this channel before so it's going to be real quick. And then we're going to look at the technique for creating the white fur and everything surrounding this. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at the eyes and the fur here. So just a quick look at the eyes first, because that's what I started on. As always, I started with a rough sketch and I used the grid method to add the outline to this. I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you want to find out how exactly I use that technique. And I'm also going to leave a link to the reference photo for this in the description below as well. So if you want to follow along, you can check that out too. So I started off with a dark sepia pencil and just gently roughed out the kind of outer edge of the iris and the eyelids and kind of water lines and everything within the eye using a really light pressure with the dark sepia pencil. I'm using polychromos for this portrait by the way. And then I went in with a bit of a harder pressure and really solidified those lines, especially around the iris, around the coloured part of the eye and added in the pupil and everything as well. For the base layer on the eye, I added in some ivory and then I've gone in with some light yellow tones and then I'm slowly developing into my darker layers so I went through yellows a little bit of green and then I've developed all the way to burnt ochre burnt sienna and some walnut brown as well into the pupil I've actually added some walnut brown and some dark indigo and I really like to layer those two colors specifically together because they create a really unique nice dark tone it's a lot nicer than adding in dark sepia the reason I add dark sepia for the outer eye area is because I can just go straight in with that pencil really lightly rather than going in with brown and then having to do blue over the top. So for the pupil, I've added in a light base of the dark sepia at the beginning and then I've added in the walnut brown and some dark indigo over the top to really make it look nice and deep and you can kind of get the sense that there's a little bit of a blue tone within the pupil and I think it just adds a little bit extra to the eye as well. To get a super glassy look on the actual iris, the coloured part of the eye and the highlight, I have just blended with a white pencil, so I've used my Holbein soft white pencil, I really recommend that one to you guys. And I, every now and then I've just kind of gone in and blended a few layers, so once I've added down those light yellows I went in and added the white over the top using a small circular motion. A circular motion on eyes here really helps to get into the tooth of the paper and it really develops the layers a lot easier as well. So as you can see I'm starting the second eye here, I'm doing exactly the same process using that dark sepia to just gently rough in the outlines and everything and then going in with a harder pressure and adding in the sort of highlight as well by using the Holbein soft white down first and then adding in some of the other layers as you can see I'm blending with that white pencil, it kind of desaturates the colour and then I'm having to go back in with more layers Adding multiple layers here is absolutely perfect because it's just going to help to build a nice glassy look. It's going to continue to eliminate the grain of the paper which can often show through and just adding multiple layers like this adds depth and intrigue as well to the piece. And I'm using the walnut brown around the very outer edges of the eyes to really add a shadow in there. So you'll find that around the edges of the eyes, especially if you've got some really hooded eyelids or some eyelashes and everything hanging over or depending on the direction of the light and everything, you'll find that around the edges of the eyes tend to be the darkest area and then as they come sort of to the middle of the coloured area, they tend to get a little bit lighter and then they tend to go a little bit darker as you go towards the pupil as well, but not in all cases, but that was the case for this one. So I've just used the walnut brown around the outer edge, added in a little bit of dark green as well and some dark indigo as I mentioned to really darken everything up and as you can see I've got some really nice dark kind of inner eye sections and I've added in the water line around the eyes as well for the wolf here as well. So in a moment I'll start to really work on the fur but just before I add in any kind of base layer I've added in a little bit of a fur line around the outer edge of the eye as you can see here and I've used the dark sepia pencil just to add in a few small strokes just to initiate that kind of blend into this really white fur down here. So I've just used a quick fur line method, I'm going to leave a link to a video in the description that really explains that method as well, so that will be in the description for you. I'm using that method on all of the fur strokes and everything here and I've gone around the dark areas of the eye and just dragged some dark sepia fur lines to help that blend. 
Now for the white fur itself, I've covered white fur on my channel as well, but I'm going to just reiterate for this tutorial because I've used a slightly different approach here because I didn't go into too much detail. So I've added down a solid base layer of some warm grey one and I've followed the fur direction and I've used some quite short shading motions because the fur was quite short, especially like on the bridge of the nose and that kind of area. And then what I've done is gone in with a warm grey three and I've blocked out some of the darker areas. So I've added in any shadows that I can see around the eyebrow bone and then as you get further up towards the forehead and especially around the eyes it tends to be a little bit darker in the white fur. I've just used a warm grey three pencil. Then I've gone in with a warm grey four and I've added in some fur lines and a little bit of shading to help darken some areas and then I've gone in with a warm grey six to add in some further fur lines and then I've started to glaze in some colours over the top. So I've really started to develop the shadows of the white fur first just by going in with some grey pencils. So I've just used warm greys for all of this fur to begin with and develop those shadows and then I've gone into the lighter areas and to some of the shadow areas with some different colours. So I've mainly used a sky blue pencil here. So I've added in a glaze of sky blue into the lighter areas first, so the areas where you can't see any of those shadows and it's like super nice and bright and white and adding in blue on top of the base of the warm grey one in these lighter areas just really helps to make the fur look a lot whiter. So when when you're adding blue into things it often makes it look a lot brighter than it actually is. So that's why I've added in the sky blue in those lighter areas of the fur here. I've also added the sky blue into the shadows just to help with a bit of continuity of the colour palette. I've also used the dark indigo into the darker areas, the more shadowed areas of the white fur. And also into there I've added in some green. So the main kind of tones and colours that were coming through on this particular wolf were blues and greens in the shadows. So that's what I've used here. Usually I would add in a little bit of purple but because of this is a tutorial for Patreon and for my Puffin people I wanted to keep the colour palette quite simple so I've just kind of kept it to blues and greens I've also added in some raw umber as well which was present in the eyes so I've kind of tied in the colour scheme and everything from the eyes into the fur but I just wanted to keep it really nice and simple in terms of the colour palette so I didn't add any purples in here and I think it actually works really well without the purples just those blues and those greens working really nicely together and a little bit of the yellow into some of the kind of warmer areas of the fur so as I mentioned you can see it happening here I'm kind of going into around the eye I've added in a warm grey one base then I'm using the warm grey three to really develop the darker shadow areas of the white fur so around the eyebrows and especially around the very outer edge of the eyes that's where we've got a majority of those darker areas and you can see I'm just kind of going in with some dark sepia as well so the Fur layering process for white fur is exactly the same as any other kind of fur. I've gone in with my super light colour first as the base and kind of directed the flow of the fur. So I've really looked at the reference photo and added in the warm grey one as a base and in the direction of the fur. And then that just helps with further layers because then I don't have to think about what direction everything's going because I've already got that base down all over of the warm grey one. So then I'm building into my slightly darker greys and then gradually getting darker and darker and as I'm going darker I'm when I'm adding the fur lines in I'm not grouping them as close together because otherwise you're going to get a really concentrated dark area and you don't really want that for light fur you want to keep the element of the white fur really present so as you're going into your darker colours for adding in the shadows and a few of the kind of really defined fur lines for white fur you want to keep them really far apart you don't want to group them really close together and you don't want to add too many because otherwise it's just going to look like grey fur or like a kind of blue grey toned fur so you want to keep your light layers really concentrated close together obviously you're adding in your very initial base using some shading and then as you're getting towards your darker colors you're going to use them less and less that is really really important especially for white fur and then you want to go in and glaze some of those unusual colors like the blues and the greens over the top at the very end that's what i've done in this case for this one usually when i draw white fur i kind of add them in as a mid-tone as i'm going through and add some fur lines but for this one 
because I wanted to keep the fur kind of almost blurred and not really in focus or the, f or the forefront of this portrait I just glazed the blues over the top at the end and I actually really like the effect that this had so I might use this technique for further white fur that I may create but yeah that's pretty much it for this tutorial I just wanted to explain a few quick processes of exactly how I've drawn this one but if you want to follow along with the full thing there's a two and a half hour tutorial available on patreon and to my club puffins the patreon uh, club puffin section is actually full at the moment so if you want to follow this along you'll actually have to join up over on my website or wait for a space to come available in the club puffin tier on patreon um, but yeah, if you want to follow along with other tutorials as well, they are available over on my Patreon, especially if you're looking at fur. There's a really in-depth fur library, I think there's about 21 tutorials just on fur at the moment, um, and I keep adding to that at the moment as well. So if you want to learn how to draw realistically, then make sure you check out those links, they'll be in the description below. But I want to thank you guys for watching this and for supporting me here on YouTube. You guys are the best, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Bye!